So in a bar chart, for example, we can use glyphs to represent more than just, you know, the actual value of data elements. We can use glyphs to represent their variance. So in this case, if we have bars, we can put a glyph at the top of each bar indicating the value. But we can also add information, for example, um, standard deviation or variance, and in fact, uh, where the uh, mean or median value is indicated in, in where, the vary, where the data varies. So these could be 25%, uh, 75% bars. And we can see in some cases that the distribution of data that um, gets aggregated and represented as a single bar, um, the actual distribution is skewed in one direction or another. Uh, in tables, you can use glyphs. Um, you can represent um, entries as, for example, colors, and that's a, a kind of a glyph, a very simple glyph. But mapping uh, table values to color is a very common thing, and we're all used to this in, in seeing weather maps where, uh, where heat is mapped to, uh, to color, as, as, for example, this, um, this example here. And um, quantitatively, um, you know, mapping color is, is not necessarily the, the most effective uh, way for perceptual accuracy, but you know, we can tell that it's colder up here and warmer down here. We just might not be able to tell how much colder or how much warmer it is uh, unless we go to the reference here and try to make a, uh, an equivalence on this legend here uh, showing what the average temperature is for this particular month. And you can do this discreetly as well. This is a, a, an example of, of continuous uh, variables. You can do this discreetly, and we do this in computer science all the time. If I have a, uh, a program that I'm trying to optimize, I might change one parameter, you know, some discrete number of times, and some other parameter some discrete number of times, and try to find the sweet spot in terms of performance, the lowest performance here I'm displaying in red. Uh, 233, I think, is the, is the optimal value here and I can see which parameter values are giving me worse results and these things may jump around quite a bit uh, programs tend to behave nonlinearly as you change these parameters for because the systems they run on are quite complicated but having these uh, glyphs uh, basically these numbers represented as color as well helps you hone in on the uh, on the good values and this one was enabled just using Microsoft Excel their conditional formatting uh, option allows you to to represent uh, values with color as well. So you can also use glyphs to do high dimensional visualization. So in this case, this is worlds within a within worlds. I've set up a, a horizontal and a vertical nominal uh, categorical uh, axes, and what I'm plotting inside each of these at table cells is a sec separate plot. It's a scatter plot. I just happen to have one data point in the scatter plot. So I've embedded a two-dimensional plot in each element of a two-dimensional table. So that enables you to look at four-dimensional data as basically a two-dimensional table of two-dimensional plots. In this case, what I'm doing is I've got a two-dimensional table of glyphs. Each glyph happens to be a two-dimensional plot. And so I'm looking, in this case, at life expectancy, and I'm looking at the rates of infant mortality inside each, uh, each year from 2000, 2001, 2002, 2003, 2004. And then vertically, I'm looking at the uh, various uh, continents or regions, and I'm looking at the life expectancy measured inside each one of those. So I've got a, an outer table that's looking at the year and looking at the... Um, and vertically looking at the region of the world and then inside each year and each region of the world I'm plotting infant mortality versus life expectancy and you can see some um, you know some shifts in the data as we move across different areas of the world and you can see some shifts in infant mortality that but you can see that there aren't as many shifts as you move from year to year. There's another uh, interesting glyph that you can use called Chernoff faces. And in this case you're creating a table, some other layout, but the data points are being plotted with faces and the attributes of the face 
are indicating various uh, measures of some dimension of the data set. In this case, this is um, 12 uh, state judges uh, as rated by lawyers, and you can map certain features, um, certain aspects of the way the state judges were being measured. For example, the number of times they were overturned might change the expression from happy to sad, and and the size of the face may be the number of cases they've seen. And so, you know, this this face may look um, you know quite large, and then this face may look quite small because this face has seen more. This this state judge has reviewed more cases than than has this this judge. And so um, you, you have to real you, you can't make value judgments based on you know the appearance of the faces, but the appearance of the faces and and the expressions that they have can give you another data channel that you can perceive and remember actually quite well as a way of, uh, of finding interesting aspects of the data, things in the data that stand out. So we learned that we can use glyphs to display many other attributes of our data when we're using a chart or some other data visualization.